Breaking news right now out of the Middle East. The United States and the UK launching new airstrikes. These are against military positions against the Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen. It's retaliation for what have been a consistent string of attacks on shipping vessels into the Red Sea. You see the Red Sea there on the left of Yemen's uh, border there, which is coming down the pike over Saudi Arabia's border. And this has been, if you follow the news, a big issue. The U.N. Security Council recently weighing in, teeing up what the West said was a final warning. Well, it appears tonight now from this reporting that they are past the warning stage. We have a very special guest to try to make sense of this story, David Rothkopf is a foreign policy expert. He served in the Clinton administration. He hosts Deep State Radio. Um, this is not a, a pure surprise, David, in that, as I mentioned, the U.N. Security Council and other measures had made uh, public warnings that there could be these strikes. Tonight, breaking news, the strikes are happening. Um, explain to us how we got here. Well, the Houthis, since the beginning of the conflict between Israel and Gaza, have been harassing ship traffic uh, in the region. Uh, it had caused a substantial drop-off in uh, ships passing through the Suez Canal, um, and that has an economic effect. Uh, and they had also been, um, you know, launching missiles and drones and things that had effect and could have had a much uh, larger negative effect. Warnings had been given. Uh, and I think the message is now um, no more warnings that, that, you know, 12 sites were struck. This includes sites, um, sites for drone storage. Drones were one of the means they were uh, reaching out, uh, training sites and, and other sites. Uh, and it was the U.S. acting alongside the British, uh, which I think sends a message that uh, the international community um, does not want this to continue, not just any one nation. As you say, there's been an emphasis and a kind of a telegraphing of this being an alliance, uh, an effort not to make it look like a U.S. Uh, action designed to uh, have a one-on-one, -on -one, let alone an act of war. Um, I just want to read briefly from that U.N. Security Council resolution, which was a, a, a diplomatic statement, of course, basically saying that um, the U.N. member states, quote, in accordance with international law, may defend their vessels from attack, um, this being p posited as a necessary counterattack. Um, explain why that matters in the context of the U.N. having a unanimous resolution. Well, I think it matters because it shows that the United States and the United Kingdom are acting consistent with international law. The Houthis were not. Um, and I think it also sends a message to the Iranians uh, that their support for groups like Hamas, like the Houthis, like Hezbollah, um, uh, should not be seen as unlimited. Uh, we are not uh, intimidated by that to the point that we will not respond, even though we do not want this to escalate. Um, but that last point, we don't want it to escalate, so we're going to handle it um, in a measured, responsible, consistent with mm -hmm. international law fashion. I think is especially important. I mean, that, you make that point. I want to read from some of the, the reporting on this in the international section of the Wall Street Journal, which really overlaps with, with what you raise. And you don't need to be a Mideast expert to look up and see Western strikes on Yemen, the links to Iran, and think about the wider conflict and tension in the region. Um, the Journal reports basically the Biden administration until tonight had actually been reluctant um, to issue this kind of military response to what they see as these repeated attacks, saying, quote, they didn't want to, quote, trigger a war in the region, um, aware of the group's backing from Tehran. Um, and yet now they count at least 27 attacks by the Houthi group. So another way of saying that is 27 attacks that until tonight had gone unanswered. Um, if someone's watching David and they're looking at this and saying, OK, does that mean the risk of a regional conflict that spills out even beyond Israel Hamas is higher, um, a sustained involvement of other countries? Is that a greater risk tonight or too soon to tell? I think it's too soon to tell. The Iranians have a number of proxies operating in the region, uh, and clearly they have been beyond uh, provocative. Uh, you know, the Hamas attack was horrific. Uh, and, uh, you know, their support for Hezbollah and support for the Houthis, support for militia groups in uh, Iraq and, and in Syria have all, you know, the, the, the possibility of having this spin out of control. But I think the United States action tonight with the United Kingdom was to send a message, which is we are 
uh, determined to keep the peace. We are not going to let you spin this up to a level of chaos for shipping and other kinds of things. And I think ultimately this kind of measured, targeted, consistent with international law response is exactly the kind of thing that can keep this from escalating rather than uh, allowing provocations to continue unresponded to until something happens accidental that triggers something much broader. Understood. Uh, David, appreciate your reporting uh, and analysis on this issue. Uh, NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is reporting from the White House. Uh, what are you hearing from the administration on what was telegraphed but now is happening, these attacks on the Houthis in Yemen? What we've been able to confirm, the two U.S. officials uh, telling us that the U.S. and the U.K. have already begun uh, these strikes. But this comes after, uh, you know, the National Security Council spokesperson, John Kirby, earlier today warned the Houthis of uh, any attacks on any ships. And, of course, uh, the White House has repeatedly issued that warning, but up until now really hadn't uh, had much of an effect. Now, the U.S. and the U.K. have been considering this uh, for some time. And and the, the U.S. Uh, had already responded by shooting down missiles and drones in the region. The, the U.S. Navy also recently sank um, Houthi boats that had file, fired on commercial ships. But this is an escalation uh, going to these land-based targets. Again, we don't have confirmation on exactly how many targets were hit. Uh, we expect to learn more from that in just a short time uh, from the White House. But again, no confirmation yet, official confirmation from the National Security Council, but the breaking news, Ari, as you've been reporting, that those two, uh, two uh, U.S. officials do confirm that these strikes are underway inside Yemen. And Gabe, in the minute we have left, uh, should we expect to hear more from U.S. officials or even the president tonight? Uh, we don't have uh, any indication that the president uh, will speak tonight. Uh, we hope to hear some type of statement potentially um, shortly. We do not know exactly when. But again, at this point, the National Security Council isn't even officially confirming that these strikes are underway. Uh, but we have no indication that President Biden um, is expected to speak later tonight. All right. Gabe Gutierrez reporting from the White House. Thank you uh, on, a, on a busy night there. David, uh, when you take it all together, uh, what would be the next steps if, if this was effective in the eyes of the West? Well, I think the next steps would be that the Houthis would stand down. They would realize uh, that further punishment is what they're likely to get if they keep provoking this. Uh, and, you know, with some luck, that'll make the region a little bit safer. I think it's important to keep in mind, you know, if they had keep, kept firing missiles uh, and they actually struck something that produced a lot of deaths, there would have been a call for a much broader response, and that could have actually been escalatory. So this was very carefully timed, very measured, handled in a very measured and responsible way.